Today, as you graduate, we need to face the fact that the gap between the rich and the poor is growing. We have a world where a distinct minority, typically it has been North Americans and the Europeans, but now it is also the Chinese and the Indians who have the wealth and consume the majority of the goods in the world. 1.2 billion people live on less than a dollar a day, which the United Nations calls abject poverty. Close to 3 billion people in the world live on less than $2 a day. And what we see in the future is that the gap in terms of the economic terms will continue to increase. It is just not a money gap, it is an education gap, it's a cultural gap, and it is a skill gap. Do you know that 20% of the adults in the world, over a billion people, have never used a telephone in their life? And that includes cell phones. And so we see this today, that there are gaps in many dimensions. There's also an empowerment gap. And the poor are not after money, but they are after the ability to be able to change their own condition. You are truly living in a global world, and you have before you as you graduate a crisis before us today that is a food crisis. I have called it uh, in the press uh, the uh, perfect storm. We have the fact that we have had a one in a thousand year drought in Australia. 90% of their rice harvest was destroyed. 50% of their wheat harvest did not materialize. We have the fact that China, from Shanghai to Hong Kong, the Golden Belt, is becoming very wealthy and is eating more beef. And as a result, grains are being used to feed animals. In addition to this, we have the collapse of the U.S. dollar, and at the same time, a currency that's taken the place of the U.S. dollar is oil, and so oil has gone up. Think of the realities. If Smart and Final inside the United States and many other stores are beginning to ration rice at this point, think what other people are doing in countries. In Latin America, there are countries today that don't have the corn for their tortillas, and many Asian countries will not have the rice that they need. And so we face many challenges, and this is before you. Global economics and politics mean that when Ben Bernanke adjusts the interest rates, it has an impact in Kenya. And as the people in China become more wealthy and consume more and join the world economy, we're going to see a push greater than we've ever seen before. And you as the graduates are going to help us to engage in this. Do you know that in the next 10 years, 500 million people are going to enter the global economy? These are people that are considered poor today. They are primarily in India and China, and they will be taxing the resources of this world as they enter. And so the choices that you make as graduates, the decisions you make, are not only going to impact you and those that are around you, but they also have the potential to impact the world. And we, in our global village, are at risk of creating huge and a permanent class of have-nots. If we fail to reach beyond our shores, and you are to be only isolationists, it will be a sad day for this great country, and it will be a sad day for you as a graduate. Because we are here as global citizens, and with this great education you have, you are here to be able to make a difference. Let me tell you about some women today who, if they were here, it's a proven fact that if you were able to take a young girl in primary school throughout the world and get her only to secondary school, her HIV acquisition rate drops by 40%. She has the right of decision, she understands decision making, and she has the right to take action where she would not have to face this scourge. I could tell you many more things about women. I have had arguments with the Taliban. World Vision, nor anyone in this world, should ever agree with the Taliban where women should not be educated. We are opposed to that. We strongly oppose to it. And it is a shame today 
that the Taliban is in a resurgence, destroying schools, killing teachers, killing parents, and even killing students. What a tragedy for us today. Let me tell you a personal story that changed my life. I was in Kenya. I had gone to Kenya and I was working there and I had been out all day long visiting projects. And typically a project, it's hot, it's dusty, uh, many times the people uh, do not have water and we've been helping them with water or we're helping them with agriculture as you walk the fields. You sit down and if you know the African tradition, the men are over here under the tree sitting and talking and you have your meeting with the women because they're the decision makers. And so I came and this was a unique village because it was the end of the day and I must admit to you, I was tired, I was hungry and I was a bit grumpy. And I said, one more project. But this project was unique because I met a man named Jonathan. Jonathan came up to me. He looked like an older man. But I learned later he was quite young in his 40s. Toothless. But he was there and he was thanking me and wanted me to come into his house. Now, you have to understand the context of a house in this village. It was mud. It had palm branches for its roof. And he only had one rickety table with four rickety legs in one chair. Because of the size of my delegation, he brought the table out and the chair and set me down. And he kept saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I said, why are you thanking me? Because he said, World Vision came and you loaned my community two oxen. I said, we didn't give you the oxen? Oh, no, no, you just loaned them. But I was able to till my field, and this year I will have food for my family. Uh, he was there, and his wife was there, and she was praising God in a bit of a charismatic tradition that uh, only you see in Africa. And I knew something was wrong. Something was wrong because Jonathan and his wife were far happier than I was. And I came to recognition that the, that day that even though Jonathan had so little, he knew what the purpose of life was about. And he knew that every day of existence was because of God. And therefore, he prayed for rain. He prayed for food. And there I was. I had wealth. I had everything I could ask for. And yet, I was void. And so, I want to tell you, as you graduate, your bank accounts and even your degrees and all those things that you'll accumulate in your wealth, they're ultimately not going to bring you happiness. They're not going to bring you happiness.